All right, this knob has got to be compensating for something. This is a quick overview of the Mammoth 75 after I spent a little bit of time with it. The main summary of this board is that it is the gasket mount 75% keyboard with a large knob and a shiny booty. It is heavy and a big chonker. Oh, did I mention that the knob is huge? This video isn't sponsored. Wuchui sent this to me as a wedding gift. Thanks, Wuchui. Let's address the mammoth in the room. This is expensive as hell. $669 for sandblasted brass weight and $719 for a mirror PVD brass weight. This is the fingerprinty mirror PVD one. It is what it is, but it does include WS stabilizers that have their own precision cut holy mod pads. That's pretty cool. The reason why this is expensive is because this process to make it shiny as hell is actually a very high failure rate process. They kind of embed that into the price. They're going to lose a bunch. And for you to finally get an A stock unit with other than these smudges, you're going to be doing this a lot, to be honest with you. To get this sick finish, it's going to cost a bit of money. The board is large and in charge and has rounded edges. The exploded design of the arrows, it's almost as if the Icky 68 Aurora has a big brother with a big knob and is taller, you know, with the F-Row. The four key cluster for the nav right here, it's love it or hate it. It's another statement piece board with a price to match. The board juts out and pulls back. That's a really nice side profile. I really like how the K did that and having it down here is... The build process was honestly annoying for me. It definitely required the use of directions, so don't try to YOLO build it like I did. The knob has a magnet mechanism that requires you to screw it in before dropping the knob on, but then you can hot swap it, no problem. You can use just the top gaskets if you use the PCB foam, which acts as a bottom gasket, and that's why it's adhered. A dumb dumb like me would just rip it off. That was my mistake. If you skip the PCB foam, you'll need both sets of gaskets. Unfortunately, my package was missing a few things, some case screws and a second set of gaskets. For all of my reviews, I often build without PCB foam, without case foam. This is so I can compare Pair it and make sure that it can stand on its own without the use of foam. Foam isn't necessarily bad, but a lot of people ask, do I need the foam? So I took the foam off and the board wasn't supported properly. Oh, I don't want to rip this. Why did I hear the foam? I'm not sure. Now, if you read the directions and take an afternoon to build it, you'll probably be fine. The sound of this board is very clacky with the stock Gateron CJs on PC plate. This board isn't heavily deep or heavily clacky, so I think it can be built to push your sound profile either direction, depending on your switch, plate, and foam choices. I like the WS stabilizers, especially since they included little pads that work as holy modded pads without me having to cut band-aids. This keyboard has better looks than sound in my opinion. It looks amazing, especially with the side profile, especially with the shiny butt. But the sound is just kind of like a gas mount board, which isn't bad. We have yet to have a board that is affordable, sounds amazing, and looks amazing. In this case, the sound is solid and uh, it's very expensive. But Having options is good. All right, my final thoughts on this board is that the Mammoth 75 is a very interesting board that has a cool look, but the knob takes up so much of the visual aesthetic of it that it's either love it or you hate it. The gasket mounting is okay. It can actually sound pretty clacky, which is pretty good considering gasket mounts typically sound a little bit deeper and more muted. Honestly, the shiny butt is fun to look at first, but once you get your first scratch on there, you're never going to look at it the same. And overall, it's a little bit expensive, not too expensive, but I definitely lean more towards more affordable boards. And with this kind of heft and size and look, it probably isn't the board for me. Definitely watch multiple reviewers' takes on this board before you commit the money into it. I had a rough first impression due to the missing parts, so that's going to push me into a bias. Just gotta keep it real with y'all. Overall, I think it's a nice statement piece, but you really gotta like big keyboards like this. I typically like smaller boards because my desk is smaller, like I mentioned before. Let me know what you think of the keyboard in the comment section below. See you in the next one. Peace.